This afternoon, we're going to continue our study on the highway to growth in the Lord Jesus. We're specifically going to look at the principle of walking in diligence and adding to our faith with the hopes that we'll never stumble and bring shame to his name and that we would emanate the very um, presence, countenance, and divine nature of Christ as he lives in us. Amen. This takes cooperation. It takes intentionality. And it doesn't happen overnight. You have to be in the Word in order to gain the knowledge of God yes. so that grace and peace will be multiplied to us. Mm. And this is what this passage of Scripture teaches us. I'm going to read one down. You can catch it, what I just said in verse 2. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith, with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of, our, of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life, and godliness, who through, listen closely, second time, through the knowledge of Him, who called us by glory and virtue, verse 4, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In verse 5, key verses 5 through uh, 10, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge Self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will, will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Every born-again believer has received a measure of faith. The Bible's teaching here that, as we know, faith is created by hearing the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And when you hear the Word of God, your increase, you get an increase in the knowledge of Him. Amen. And it is the Lord's desire, based on what we have read here, that we cling to the promises. And the promises uh, from God are yes and amen to the believer. Mm -hmm. So the prerequisites for spiritual growth is you must be a true believer. Secondly, you must acknowledge that you have been given a measure of faith. Now, there's obvious wisdom in physical exercise. But the Bible says that in the same way that there's, there's benefit from uh, physical exercise, there's more benefit from exercising your faith. Now, if, if you're called to exercise your faith, you must understand what that is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hoped for. Mm -hmm. Amen. That hope must come out of a promise or a revelation or a, um, a passage of Scripture. In other words, you, ha you and I have to believe in something to hope for. You're not hoping for thin air. 
Invis- you're not hoping for things that have not been promised to you. you have, you're not hoping for things that you don't know about. Amen. So the revelation of the Word increases our knowledge. The Bible says it causes grace and peace to be multiplied to us. Mm-hmm. And with that revelation of Him and us clinging to the assurances of His divine promise, it changes us on the inside. It allows us to focus on Him. Mm-hmm. And it, it redirects our former nature. In other words, when you came to Christ, there was a death. Mm-hmm. There was a death to the edemic nature. Amen. And now we should reflect the nature of Christ who dwells in us by the Holy Spirit. But faith needs to grow. And that's what this lesson is about. And so we do not, as I mentioned to you previously, we do not want to be seen as the the small twig on the side of the road with a couple leaves on it. No, we want to be seen as a tree that's well planted by the rivers of water that's bearing forth fruit continually because its roots grow deep. There's a great danger in having a superficial walk with the Lord for a long period of time. Because what will happen is you'll be a couple inches deep and six feet wide. Mm. Meaning you have broad spectrum of view of God and His kingdom, but you're not, you don't have depth of understanding or depths of knowledge or a deep revelation of the person of Christ. Mm. We need to have understanding of Jesus This whole Bible is about Christ. And we have to cling and long and do the things that the Scripture teaches us in order order so that the knowledge of God would be ever-increasing in your life. And with the ever-increasing knowledge, the uh, ever-more abundance of grace and peace will be multiplied to you. And your, your confidence in the God who spoke the the promises will be so deep and so rich that you're not easily moved. You're not easily shaken. In other words, confidence in Christ, the promise giver, the promise keeper, builds a faith in God that's unshakable. That's how you exercise faith. It's hearing a promise, believing the promise, or hearing a command and believing that God wants that done Mm -hmm. in you and is willing to lead you in it and is willing to co-labor with you and you step it out. It's that bold confidence or a quiet, bold confidence Mm -hmm. in the Lord, i.e. faith. Mm -hmm. Faith can grow. Faith needs to be exercised. But the knowledge of God allows us to celebrate that Jesus has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. In other words, you have a treasure box. It's not that you're going to get a treasure box. You were given a treasure box. And, And as you grow in the Lord and you start to exercise your faith, guess what? Your confidence builds. Your, your, your willingness uh, to move forward even though you can't see. It's, faith is the evidence of th- what? Things that you can't see. We cannot see Jesus, but we love Him. We cannot see the, the third heavens, but we know God abides there. Amen. Yes? We cannot see the judgment seat of Christ, but we're preparing to to go there. We cannot see the angels that are all around us, but we believe they're around us. Do you see where I'm going with this? In other words, you heard that God has provided angels for you. And we we believe that. We have confidence in that. Some uh, Some of us have experienced the ministry of angels where God protected us from our stupidity and rescued our lives. Amen. Some of us is, are, have already had yes. divine intervention through angelic host. Yes, yes. 
Yes. So, two things, three things. One, the knowledge of God must increase. Point. His divine power has already given us everything for life and godliness. This is something that we must acknowledge and that we stop hunting for. You have a treasure chest. His name is Christ. Amen. If He is your exclusive source, you will not run to and fro. You will not run here and there. You will run to Him. Amen. Next. It's through these exceedingly great and precious promises that we can partake in God's divine nature. Display Christ to others while we're here on this earth. That is spiritual growth. Amen. That is what the Lord is really looking for. Mm. It's when His countenance, His divine nature, overrules our fleshly thoughts, our selfish habits, our worldly thinking. Mm -hmm. To put it simple. But it teaches us in verse 5, and this is where I want you to, to look with me, please. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. It says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence. Now, diligence is something that requires repetition, focus, priority. It, it allows us to stay steadfast in our pursuit of something. In other words, a person that's diligent doesn't get distracted easily. Mm. He's not looking over here one minute and over there another minute and has forgotten his journey that's right before him. Mm. No, a diligent person will ever have the focus of the mission in front. And our mission is to experience the divine nature, to reflect that to others, to obey our Lord as the primary food of our life. So it says in verse 5, but for also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control. Do you know that walking in self-control can prohibit a whole lot of pain and suffering in our lives? Yes. What if we had complete self-control over um, our diets? Mm -hmm. Would we likely be more healthy? Mm -hmm. Yes. What if we had supernatural self-control of our tongues? Could we maybe have greater relationships on earth? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it says, to self-control, perseverance. And perseverance, when you think of it, it means that you're willing to have grit in your life, in your, in your exercising your faith. Let me tell you something. Gideon was chosen because he had grit in his bones. Amen. He wasn't willing to take the easy way. He was willing to fight and to do whatever it took to accomplish. He had grit in his bones. Sometimes we're on the edge of a victory and we just simply give up because we can't see it. No, perseverance calls us to see and to keep moving with all diligence. Luke chapter 9, verse 62 says, If a man begins to plow and looks back, he's of no use to the kingdom of God. Why is that? Because you have lost your forward mission. The looking back kicks you in neutral in your faith, in your life, in your relationship with God. No, having all diligence meaning continual pursuit, having perseverance, meaning sometimes it takes grit in, in staying with prayers, mm -hmm. praying for the sick when no one else is willing to or everyone else has given up. Mm -hmm. No. Someone that has perseverance will pray and pray and pray regardless of what they see or how they feel. We need to add diligence and perseverance and self-control to our faith. It says add it. 
Now, meaning that these are things that can be added to your spiritual walk. In other words, you don't want the measure of faith that you had 25 years ago to have the same measure today. Amen. No, with years of experience and with the hot pursuit of the Lord, your faith should grow. And one of the ways it can grow is by adding these things to it. Now, here's the real key. I'm not saying that there's some invisible shelf that you have to reach up blindly to and pull off and somehow shove it in your heart. I am saying that in everything regarding God and his, and his children and his Bible, spiritual things come to the child of God through request. Amen. It's the petition to God for the things that are mentioned here. If you don't have diligence, simply humble yourself and I need to humble myself and say, Lord, I just don't see that diligence that this Bible talks about in my life. Lord, I don't see that hot pursuit, that perseverance that, that the Bible's revealing that I need to add to my faith. I just don't have it, Lord. So what's the, what's the spiritual resolve or the resolution? Is not to accept the unacceptable as though it's unattainable. No, you acknowledge what you have need of and you acknowledge that you don't have it and that the Bible says you should add it to your faith, but you don't know how to get it. And you say, God, I don't understand the dynamics of how all this works, but I do know that you protect the simple. Yeah. Catch that. God protects the simple. Be simple and just say, Lord, I need this added to my faith. Will you please give it to me? Or would you please show me how, if at all, where my participation kicks in here? Mm -hmm. Do you see how simple and, and how humble mm -hmm. and how earnest that is? Yes. I can tell you, I know what I'm talking about. Because that has been the key to my relationship with God growing. See, he knows I'm simple. And he knows I don't get it all the time. But one thing's for sure. If I, think he, if I know that he wants it done, I will not leave him. Amen. I will not leave him. I refuse. Amen. I'm not going to leave him until I understand or he shows me the next right step. Because his heart has not changed. It's me that needs changing. <clears throat> and then lastly, it says that we need to add godliness. Well, that's simple. And there are some protections that we must engage in. The Bible's clear. It doesn't take much ungodly friendships and relationships to lead a holy person into darkness. Don't think it doesn't. If you hang out in the devil's den, you will have difficulty mm -hmm. unnecessarily. Choose your friends wisely. Mm -hmm. Spend your time. Spend your time away from what you know is evil. The scripture says uh, that we should run from evil. Job 28, 28. Now the fear of the Lord... Let me, I'm afraid to misquote it. Turn there with me, please. Job chapter 28, verse 28. We're talking about the subject of godliness and how we need to add that to our faith. It says, And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord is wisdom. And to depart from evil is what? Understanding. understanding to depart from evil is understanding you want your you want the countenance of godliness in your life do you want the character of godliness in your life first things first you got to it, it decide that you're not going to go near the devil's den where evil abounds mm -hmm. 
Because every kind of temptation and distraction for your faith will be there. It will be there. And for, all, for those of us that are 25, 30, 45, 50 years in the Lord, don't think you stand. You're standing each day by the grace of God. Amen. You're, you, you and I, our foe is invisible. Yeah. He's, he's a, a fallen angel. He is deceptive. He wrote the book on deception. And he would sure enough like to see the, a child of God fall into sin. Amen. And don't think for a minute that he doesn't understand how to tempt. That's the reason Jesus taught us, pray that you not be tempted. Amen. So that you will not fall into temptation. So that you will not fall into sin. So that you need not call, need to have that tragedy come into your life. Yes? Yes. So we understand from 2 Peter. I left off there in 2 Peter chapter 1 in verse uh, 7. It says, For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you can see from this passage of Scripture, God wants His kids to grow. Yes. Yes. He desires that. Mm-hmm. He does not want your faith the way it was 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. What are the signs of someone who has faith? Mm-hmm. They have confidence in the promises of God and in the promise giver. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. Point. They have the kingdom of God and His glory on their mind continually. They search and try and pray for understanding of what the will of God is for them daily. They try and pray to find out and understand what pleases the Lord. Someone full of productive, mature faith will desire his joy more than their own food. Amen. Prime model Jesus the Christ. Because he told those folks that were around him, you know not the food that I have. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. Amen. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. And so these are some basic principles of walking and pursuing maturity in our faith. If you would turn your Bible with me to... Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, 11, and 12. I'll start at verse 9. Hebrews chapter 6, beginning in verse 9, reading down. But, beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, in which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Stop right there. One of the markers of someone who has mature faith is they are perpetually, continually looking for divine appointments to minister to the body of Christ. That needs to be in your life. If it's not, you have to ask why. 
and ask God to show you how to correct it. This will order your steps. If you're praying daily, Lord, I am your son, I am your daughter. You live inside of me by the Holy Spirit. I have the word of God in my hand with the Bible. I have you on the inside. You've made it clear that you want us, the word minister simply means serve, that you want us to serve the body of Christ, however that may be. That might be buying a donut for someone, taking them a coffee, praying for them, Amen. discerning that they're sad, and doing your best to find out why. Do you see? This is a marker of someone mature in Christ. Their time is not idle. They are not idle in God. They are not unproductive in their knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are seeking for divine opportunities to serve people in the name and in the power of Jesus Christ. It says, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Verse 11, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence. There's that word diligent. Right? There's a pattern here. Do you catch it? Diligence, diligence, diligence. Giving all diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. In other words, if you've locked on on what you cannot see, meaning you know that Jesus is alive, you know that God allows us to talk to him through prayer, you know that he has rescued you from sin you know that you're on your way to heaven it's with that bold confidence in the assurance that hope you have hope in christ who gave the promise that said i will never leave you Amen. i will never forsake you never, never. and that you may go where i am mm -hmm. what what does those truths do it creates a bold assurance of those things that are coming. Amen. With that in mind, we make the necessary adjustments to cut out the things that distract us from what's really important in our life. Adding to your faith, giving all diligence, walking in perseverance. Sometimes praying for grit to stay with it. This is not, if anybody tells you that their walk with Christ is all grace and fluffy and duffy and full of flowers and there's no, there's no fights, there's no war, they may not have walked with Christ long. Amen. Because all the things I just mentioned are in the walk with Jesus. Look at his own life. Look at the life of his disciples. Look at the life of his apostles. Some were hung. Some were beheaded. Okay? God is trying to prepare us for the most difficult time in our lives that may come soon. We're on the brink of World War III. Who knows if it's going to come? But God said in Luke 21... That in the last days there will be perilous times. Yes, yes. You can't have fluffy, duffy, superficial, on the top, this deep, this wide faith, and stand. Mm -hmm. So we need to take to heart to yes. pray for diligence. We must take to heart to add perseverance to our faith. We must take to heart to walk in the attitude of a minister for God's sake. Amen. Amen. What will happen is those commitments to those things. Jesus honors those kinds of petitions. 
because he wants you to have. And if you ask for it, then he's surely not to deny you. You're not asking for $100 million to go buy a fleet of cars. No, you're asking for a spiritual need. Mm -hmm. And you can be sure Christ is going to add that to you if you humble yourself and say, I don't know if I've got it or not. I probably don't, but I'm asking you to give it to me because I need it. Because your word says I need it. So, it says here, in verse 11, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become, say that with me, sluggish. sluggish. Wake up, O sleeper. Wake up. For the time is nearer today than it was yesterday. Our departure from this earth is unknown. So that makes it urgent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Yeah. There's no room for sluggishness in the kingdom. It says, verse 11, But imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Let me tell you something. Perseverance and patience is bolted at the hip together. It says, Verse 13, and this kind of runs into our next section. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessings I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And, and so, after he had patiently it, what? Endured. endured, he obtained the promise. Yes. There's that call, that call for perseverance. I don't know who I'm talking to. Who's praying for something you have yet to see realize? But if it's godly, if it's good, if it's Christ's desire for that to come into your life, don't give up. Amen. Do not look back. Do not look to the left or to the right. Amen. Stay steadfast with a full focus on the face of Christ. Because He gave the promises. He, you and I must be assured that the one who gives the promise is faithful. You can be sure God is faithful. Amen. It says, I'm going to stop there because I'm closing out on my time here. I know I'm over my time. Um, my, my prayer is that we'll understand that vision leaks. And if you don't use your faith, it's like muscles or brains. They lose their strength. So you, you say, well, what's the resolve? It's going to begin with your desire. You're not, you come to the realization and the resolve in your own heart that I refuse to let my faith die. Amen. I refuse to stay idle in Jesus. Amen. I refuse to let my faith stay where it is. Amen. I so desire to grow up in Christ that he will call on me for those special things. Amen. I so desire to revere him that you pray day and night for the newest measure, the fullest measure of fear and reverence of God. Because God feeds the man or woman that fears him. He shares his secrets with the man or woman that fear him. And I can assure you, he takes care of those who obey him. You can be sure of it. You say, what's your point? I'm saying... Don't just take your faith as granted and given, and your faith can grow. Your faith can grow. Amen. Give that a little thought. Your faith can and should grow. Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting me share.